Hi there, Chris here. So I thought I'd fire up Suki's Sterling engine. And while we're waiting for that to heat up, uh, I had sent Lady Locks some uh, chub key blanks and I'll kind of show where she needs to trim them. So we'll get that fired up. And um, I find it's best to use, if you can find a nice steel one, that, that this is nice. So what you want to do is, let's see, this is what mine was. I probably took too much off of here. You don't probably have to take that, that much off. How's our engine doing? Oh, it's got a ways. All right, so... Let's see, you want to take it down like to there and then across here. And you can do it with a file or um, a Dremel and then across here and then throw it in whatever kind of thing you got. So that's basically what you want to do. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. And let's see where we are on the sterling. So the way this works is that's a closed chamber that you heat the air and the hot air pushes the little uh, flywheel this way. And somewhere I think it sucks in colder air. This is a cooling thing. These are cooling. Uh, last time I did this, I explained it how I thought I understood it. <laughs> Some guy got on there and said, no, 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 that's not right. Evidently, it was Mr. Sterling. Not really. I mean, Sterling guy died eons ago. But um, he said I totally didn't explain it right. So, but anyway, it's the differential between the hot and the cold pushing and pushing and pushing. And we're almost there. And this is kind of dirty. I did have to. <laughs> I did have to uh, lubricate it. Come on. Maybe my wick needs to be bigger. That could be tough. Probably burn down the set. Well, let's see. I'll take this off camera, make the wick a little bit bigger. Stop it. Kind of went out. All right, pulled the wick out a little bit. Get the uh, pliers out of the glass zone, or I mean the tweezers. All right, so I'll have to wait till it heats up again. The whole thing's getting on fire. I don't, see, I don't know if you can see that. That ought to do it, huh? <laughs> it's running out too much. Anyway, this, if it's not on, it has rubber feet, but if it's not on rubber here, um, I had it on the hard tabletop, and it was like starting to walk away. Also, this thing came with a little light that you can plug in here because that's a little generator oh it goes in it goes in these contacts here it's starting to go away Let's see if i can get the light show going oh wrong polarity I know. So that's Sterling Engine. And <clears throat> I was watching Paul Spring it the other morning, and you know, on my phone, sometimes I want to hit it fast forward and fast, uh, you know, go forward a little bit or back, but I hit the wrong thing and it skipped to the next video. And it was 
this guy had made the world's smallest Stirling engine. And the base of it fit on the end of a pencil. And it was the most incredible machining video I've ever seen. This guy uh, had a, you know, <laughs> like watchmaker lathes and he had built things. And literally the whole thing was only this big by this big. Um, if you want, it just look on YouTube for the world's smallest uh, Sterling engine. And I think the title of it, Will It Will It Run? And of course it does. But it's minuscule. Everything's done with tweezers. You see him facing off a little piece of brass. And, you know, it's like this big in the, in the screen. And you don't realize how small it is until he comes in with a little, little bitty tweezers and picks it out. <laughs> anyway, it's incredible. So there you go. There is a, a Suki's. Sterling Engine doing a light show. Um, and I hope that was helpful, Lady Locks. Anyway, we will see you next time.